When it was reported that Donald Trump drank multiple Diet Cokes per day and even had a Diet Coke button in the Oval Office, this is how the media reacted. We see him go up and down during the course of a day, and it may sometimes depend on the supply of Diet Coke. The other thing that would concern me more is this consistent um, consumption of fats and sugars. 12 Diet Cokes is a lot of Diet Coke and a not very well, healthy thing. I- you know, it causes a lot of things that you'd expect a lot of caffeine to cause. Irritability, insomnia, sometimes you become more unfocused. But now that there's actual Coke in the White House, not in a can, but in a line, they act like it's a big joke. I would like to know, blow by blow, who is responsible for this? (laughs) Too soon. (laughs) There is no too soon on this. No one was injured, as far as we know. And it's an illicit drug at the White House. (laughs) Why can't you actually have a bit of fun with it? Joining me now, Vivek Ramaswamy. He is the Republican presidential candidate. Vivek, thanks for being here. Why do you think the media is so unconcerned about this, especially since Hunter Biden's been all over the House? And how does she know no one was injured? So if the media is going to joke about this, I think the joke to crack is that this is Joe Biden doing his debate prep for the presidential debates using performance enhancing drugs because his recent public statements would suggest that perhaps he needs it. That might be the direction you take mm-hmm. with the joke if you find cocaine in the White House. But as you said, Coca-Cola, that's a media story. <laughs> Actual cocaine in the White House. Brush that along. And yeah. I'd say all joking aside, if you, if you really get to the seriousness of this, it's just one more yet another example of two standards of law in this country. Mm. One, if you're part of the privileged class. One, if you're part of many people across this country, which many Democrats have railed against, who are locked up for possession of cocaine. Yeah. Now it shows up in the White House and it's a laughing matter. Well, you so know, they, in a certain they, sense, it's just evidence of a deeper problem. Yeah. No, this situation made me think of an incident I remember covering back in the Clinton administration. The Secret Service in 1993 balked at granting permanent passes to about a dozen people in the Clinton White House because of concerns that they had recently used illegal drugs that in some instances included crack cocaine and hallucinogens. Your reaction to this, why the blasé approach this time when it might be staffers who drop this bag or cocaine around the White House in the West Wing? Well, I find it very interesting that you do go back to making a Clinton era comparison. (laughs) That's a good one. One of the things I've been actually doing is comparing a lot of what we see from the Biden White House today to other aspects of that Clinton era. Even then, Senator Joe Biden, on a more serious topic here, was for voting for the workfare requirements passed under President Bill Clinton. Yes. And yet, for much lighter workfare requirements proposed by Republicans today, Joe Biden calls that racist and dismisses it. Mm. So it shows how far we've come as a culture. This is not just a Republican versus Democrat tug of war. Mm. It's a shift. It's a ground shift in even the makeup and the presuppositions of the Democratic Party itself. It is an interesting comparison. And if you go down the list, even compared to Bill Clinton, the Joe Biden presidency of today is a foreign terrain altogether. Mm -hmm. Vivek, let's talk about shifting landscapes. You were in the inner city of Philadelphia a few weeks ago. I need your reaction to this. The D.A. there, Larry Krasner, said after a Philadelphia mass shooting left five people dead, he explained it this way. It is time for everybody in our legislature including the ones who would like to walk around with an ar-15 lapel pin it is time for every one of them to face the voters and if they're not going to do something then the voters are going to have to vote them out because that's what that lapel pin means it means vote me out i am against you and i'm against your safety vivek after everything we've seen in blue cities are republicans against or the people, rather, against safety. So, look, I think that we have to get to the root cause of what's going on here, a mental health epidemic across Mm. our country. I know the facts are still coming out, but it appears that it may have been, yet again, a transgender individual involved, Mm. or at least someone suffering from an appearance of a mental health condition. Mm. That's what we need to actually have the courage to stand up 
and address in this country. Mm -hmm. The crisis of fatherlessness. Most mass shootings are committed by people who did not grow up in a dual parent household. Mm -hmm. I visited Kensington. Part of the problem is the government is literally paying for some of the behaviors that we would rather not see people engage in, giving out crack pipes or giving out needles for free through so-called aid programs. That's what we need to address is the mm -hmm. upstream root causes. And Democratic politicians like Krasner, the easy thing for them to do is to virtue signal in the wake of a crisis. Mm -hmm. The harder thing and the thing that they actually need to do is step up and actually address the root causes right there in their home turf. And it's a shame what I saw in Kensington when yeah. I visited. That isn't the stuff of the United States of America. It's the stuff of a third world nation, yet it's right here at home. Vivek, so good of you to go there, where a lot of other Republican candidates do not go or wouldn't dare go. Important light that you've shown on that community. Thank you for being here. Good luck out on the trail.